Well, we're here with the uh, the team behind a Fat Wreck. Guys, introduce yourselves. I'm Sean Colon. I'm the director and producer for a Fat Wreck. I'm Justin Wilson, um, director of photography, editor, and producer. So uh, this would just seem like you know, kind of just a real lazy. You didn't do much here. Was this just a real simple, easy shoot type thing? Yeah, um, pretty much. Yeah, super easy. The easiest thing to do in the world is make a movie. Anyone can do it. It's so easy. You just have to be patient <laughs> for three years. Right. I'm curious, where did like <laughs> the idea to to go back? Like, where did this first get a start, though? Because it does feel like that this started very different, and it kind of molded into. Let's just talk about all this beautiful music and these guys. Well, um, I had done, I was doing some music videos, and I wanted to do like a project to kind of learn how to do film stuff. So I decided, I was like, I want to make a film, I'm going to do short documentary type things, something I might be able to pull off. And I was like, what do I like, you know? And so I was like, I like Fat Records a lot. I was a big, huge fan, still a huge fan. I've been for a while. Some of my favorite bands are Fat Records bands. And, but there wasn't any documentary about them. And I thought it was like a lot of the Washington DC stuff has been covered, that, that 80s punk scene, and a lot of the more violent parts of mm -hmm. punk rock. And because there were, you know, uh, the kind of Western civilization, those kind of things have existed. But this is the kind of thing that happened after. And it's the thing I grew up with, which is a lot different. No, the violence wasn't there, and it was more of a camaraderie. So uh, I saw a lack of something, so I started I just said I was going and shoot. I asked my buddy, like, what should I, camera should I take? And he was like this, and I just started shooting, not knowing what I was doing. Well, I'm kind of curious, because the punk scene hasn't been covered by, like, it's always been covered as, like, here are these crazy kids going insane. It's never been, from a fan's perspective, someone who is going to sit back and love this music. Was it fun to showcase it in that positive light and really show these guys as the way they kind of really are, and not just, oh, they're just musicians, but... We got to meet so many different aspects of these guys. I think that was fun about making the film was that, that being able to play with that juxtaposition of here are these guys that are super ethical, they're you know uh, socially conscious, they're like really in a lot ways more ethical than some more straight laced business type people because they uh, you don't screw people over mm -hmm. no matter what you know it's like a underlying rule you know and you, sh you should don't do it so. Uh, I thought that, but then also they're doing drugs, and they're you know got mohawks and you know and they're you know being rowdy and you know drinking a lot and you know very it's kind of an aggressive kind of music you know so um, I thought that to be able to showcase that because everyone has a definition of punk and it's usually the bleh, like, yeah. I'm a punk I'm gutter punk nihilistic kind of thing and that's not my association with punk rock it's was really more about expressing yourself. Um, having the freedom of, of, to express yourself despite societal norms and kind of doing your, blazing your own path. So um, yeah, I wanted to be able to showcase that and uh, show that you can also run a business ethically and be successful, and it's, especially in the music industry where that is a rare story. You know. Shooting wise, getting to do some of these interviews with these guys, but also mix in, how much footage did you guys get to get hold of and tackle and break into? I think collectively it was 100 inter over 100 interviews. Yeah, about 120 then, interviews total. And then there was probably 90 to 100 hours of archival. archival. So yeah, we nothing were, really to go through at all. We were very lucky. Uh, there's the people who are into this music or into it when, you know, 25 years ago still carry the, the love for it. And so a lot of these guys you know, kept these tapes and filmed all these guys when they were coming through. And, uh, you know, I reached out to one guy because I found some things and he had shot all this footage of the first time these guys, bands had been to Canada, 93 and 94, like, real young. And he said, I, I knew someone one day would come for these tapes. <laughs> <laughs> he kept them and he had it, like, organized and it just, it was, it was amazing. And he was like, uh, like, just make sure you give me credit, you know, like, and make sure I get my tapes back, please. <laughs> Um, so, and it wasn't just one guy, it was several people that were like, I mean, the movie was really just, um, there's a tag in the trailer and on the movie where it says, instead of saying a Sean Cologne film or, mm -hmm. you know, something like it says a, fat, a, a film by Fat Records fans. Because yeah. it was, I mean, uh, you know, we did the crowdfunding. I think so they literally paid for it. <laughs> they literally, like, uh, a lot of the cr crew on it uh, were volunteers 
you know, very specialized guys like uh, Jeremy Fry. He's a motion graphics guy. He's uh, he's won an Emmy. He does like a lot of uh, you know um, commercial work. And he was like, "Please, can I work on your movie?" You know, like kind of thing. And I don't know. He's a fan. So the whole movie was put together by people who are just really passionate about it. So and I got to be the guy, the head of the spear, but it was really just a huge community effort. We had multiple editors. It wasn't just Sean and I. There was a guy named Kyler who was interning, mm -hmm. um, who did a ton of work while Sean and I were both doing other things. And then um, other people at Charlie and From Tango, like our producer, who's not even an editor, helped edit some of the lag wagon section. Then our audio engineer, Dusty, helped edit the, some of the propaganda section of the film. So you really had, while it was a lot to go through, um, there was more help than any other film I've been on as far as editing and the work kind of spread around and it wasn't like people getting butt hurt when someone was taking over your section or something. We kind of passed it around very liberally and... Um, and even decisions, I mean I kind of guided what my vision was where I wanted to go with stuff but it was very, I would you'd get something together and we kind of put it out to some of the main producers and the writer, our head writer Greg Pratt um, and they would give feedback and we would, you know, Greg won a lot of battles, actually, you know, with, not battles, but, you know, with things where he say, well, I don't know if we should really do this, and he didn't really understand why we did a certain thing. Um, a lot of, but at the same time, like, Justin, we would do things visually, because we didn't want it just to be a talking head kind of movie. We wanted yeah. to be able to do, uh, Justin uh, did filmage, which uh, kind of set the bar for me for uh, punk rock documentaries and documentaries in general, just really having taken a cinematic approach and using the visual storytelling, you know, our movie's a lot of talking head, because it's just people talking about what happened in the past. So to be able to do some establishing shots and have his, him, we would do things and Greg, the writer, would say, why are we doing that? It's like, you know, we're kind of explaining it visually and not everything on the nose all the time, so. I want you to talk about this more though, because I love how the music underlaying throughout, it feels like at certain points you're in the moment, in the show, if you will. Like, that part of the editing process, making it not just like a linear story, we're gonna get this guy's story and this guy's story. How much fun was that? Creating that ebb and flow, it feels like just a fun ass wave. Well we wanted, to, like we wanted, like there was two things we were catering to, which one is the Fat Records fans. Mm -hmm. we, they had, we need to satisfy a certain thing there, but we also wanted to be people in the fold that are not, you know, punk rock guys or into, like the story is, I think it rises above just the actual music stuff. Um, the music for me is great, uh, as far as utilizing the music, I mean, there was so many times that the music is so self-referential to the events, mm -hmm. and so like there's a scene where Mike's you know talking about his drug use, and underneath the, is a song of him talking about his drug use. You know, like uh, you know, I'm an alcoholic, you know, guy, and it's during the part that he's got you know. So it has it was real e easy to kind of like uh, not easy, but it was kind of like a no-brainer. Somehow you get to a point you're like, oh, that song needs to go there. Oh, that you know. Uh, so, having access to all the music um, mm. early on, them saying, "Hey, you can just use whatever." You know, we have deals with them, but they said, "You know, whatever you need for the on um, music-wise, go ahead and use it." So, I mean, we think have like 120 songs in the movie. There's a lot of songs. <laughs> yeah, it goes through the whole film. I don't remember a moment when there wasn't some type of either small underlying bed or something, or a full-on song. There's, I think, one or two moments <coughs> where we kind of utilize that to our advantage with a little bit of silence. Mm. And I think that it, it really has a much more impact, the silence does, because generally there's this, uh, this push with the music, of, and, and the music is fast and has an energy to it. So when it hits a, a point of silence, it also, we were able to use that as well, which is one of, one of my, one of my like, moments that I love in the movie was when it, you know, pause, you know, which is great, so. Kind of looking at this guy and a couple of the other great puppets, I'm curious, there's not just puppetry going on, there's also animation. There, You guys went full board with this. You didn't just make a simple ass documentary. You put in so much more, which kind of fits the whole Fat Record label. Like they put in all the guys they could get in. Like right. it was, it fits. It's kind of perfect in that sense. I saw, like once we hit the crowdfunding thing, and I realized that I had an opportunity to do a feature and um, I could play. And so I wanted to, to do something that was just fun. You know, I wanted to, I, my opportunity to make something, you know, and so let's, what can we do with it that's fun and not just the normal stuff? I mean, filmage, 
is amazing, but I didn't want to like copy filmage. I wanted it to be its own thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And I um, having the puppets. Um, I always wanted animation, but we didn't have the budget to pull mm -hmm. off animation the whole time. And animation and documentaries have become more of a staple now. Um, I knew that I wanted to have animation for a very specific part in the movie, and it just needed to be there. But as far as uh, we kind of played through a few ideas about like way to do reenactments. We played with live action. I was thinking about maybe having kids do like certain, you know, not. Oh yeah, we were gonna have the kids. Not, dr not, not drug stuff. Not the drug stuff. Not oh, drug stuff, but some of the more simple fun stuff. Like when, when we were talking about being kids, mm. instead of having puppets, we were gonna have kids like, dressed up like. Like in a camp, yeah. 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 like a punk rock mic. Kind I forgot of thing. about that. Uh, but at the end of the day, that takes, you know, it's way, way more complicated. You know, a puppet isn't gonna have a Someone saying you gotta stop at eight, you know, and like Papa can go for twelve hours. <laughs> you know, he can do whatever he wanted. And he did. Uh, he totally did. Um, my uh, one of the in what a Fat Records band called Bad Cop, Bad Cop. The lead singer, Jenny Cotterell, she's an amazing artist, and we were filming with uh, with them uh, some live performance stuff. And afterwards, I was asking about animators because she had worked for Titmouse, mm -hmm. drawing backgrounds of Metalocalypse stuff, which is a cool little. Bit. Very cool stuff. Um, which I freaked out when she told me that. I was like, what? That's crazy. Um, so she goes, just, I'm just throwing this out there. I make puppets. Like, I've, I, you know, I've made puppets before. And she ha always has a very unique style about, you'll see that. It's, like, it's not like a puppet you generally see. Like, usually you have like a Muppet type yeah. thing. They really went into detail with the, like I said, a lot of the features and, I mean, tattoos. And they went way beyond what I expected. Um, but she, uh, when when she said that, my, my like it clicked. It was like a, it was like that's that's uh, that's gonna that can be our thing. So I instantly Googled like documentaries and puppets to make sure no one had done you know that before. We're not gonna be. And as far as I know, first documentary with puppet reenactments. We should stake our claim on that one. Fun hardcore reenactments too. <laughs> I'm sure everyone will just follow suit. I think I think we're starting a new trend. You're gonna see like. No, but it seemed like puppets were kind of having a resurgence. So, with the uh, the Muppets were on you know ABC and things like that. So I was like, am I hopping on a trend? Like, <laughs> do you take it, it a whole other way though? But, <laughs> right. It's so I mean, it was a uh, it was, and when we did our test footage, we shot a few puppet scenes because we were like, we don't want to go overboard with the puppets. Let's kind of dial it and keep it modest. Every time a puppet showed up on screen, we got a reaction out of the crowd. So they went back and shot. We're like, all puppets. <laughs> More puppets. What can we do with the puppet? And um, I thought it was important for the puppets to do drugs because it's a good, fun thing to say to people. Because how can you be bad at a puppet doing drugs? It's not going to die. It'll yeah, it's not going to die, you know. And it's not really drugs anyway. It's usually flour. <laughs> usually. <laughs> I'm <just> usually. <laughs> um, Expensive shoot. Being here at, at Dallas International Film Festival, but being a part of a film that obviously is going to be a fun experience, not just a sit down moment. I feel like y'all are going to have fun with the audiences here in Dallas. What are y'all hoping that the Dallas audiences get from not just the, the subject matter of learning maybe about Fat Record or going through the, the history of what they love about the bands, but this feels like it's just going to be a fun experience. I hope that people have fun that are not into punk rock or like have fun with the movie because there's different things to connect to with the, the ethics and the story of what's going on. I think that punk rock fans, I think uh, if you're a Fat Records fan, there's going to be people who show up in the movie and you're like, because I've seen it in the, the test screen, someone's like, dude, what? He's in the movie? You know, like, it's, so for a Fat Records fan, to finally see that on screen and they're going to have a blast. And, and I think, uh, I think hopefully people get from it the ethic part that's really in the family the chosen family that's yeah. really the things I wanted to pound home that these people like it this is an important thing because you know there's things like this all over but it created a community and it lasted you know more than just the 90s it's still just the, the fact that this movie exists shows how strong the this it resonates still with everyone and rises above just some genre or a, a, a gener generational thing it's I think it's a it's a Something that's universal that I hope people, you can treat people good and still do drugs. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the best message moment in any I think, interview. I, I, think, I, I think Mike, Mike said in the interview, he says like, uh, he says, he, he's like, I didn't do drugs till my 30s. He didn't, know, he didn't do drugs when he drank, but he didn't do any drugs. And he's like, 
once you're an adult and you got your shit together and you're you 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 have all your stuff, then you can do drugs. You know why not? You know. So kids, wait till you grow up. Right. Don't do drugs. Your kids will mess you up. Wait till you're thirty, <laughs> and then do drugs. <laughs> all of them. No. Well, as many as, as, many as, you, as, many as you can. At once. As many as you can without screwing up your life. Now Mike has a different position. He just he gets to go on tour and he only has to work for twenty minutes. He doesn't drive anywhere. You know. He only does, you know, you can hear him say this, but he only does drugs when he's on tour, he doesn't do them at home. So, you know, responsible drug use. I think to end it, <laughs> let's bring in the puppets and uh, let's kids, have don't a farewell. Do, don't do drugs. Yeah. Can we Hold bring on. in the other puppets and let's have a, <laughs> a final uh, farewell from everyone? I want to ask Sean, he's got a pretty interesting history with the festival too. Since mm. this is for oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so I'll give you the short version. Mm -hmm. Let him set it up, Sean. Okay, sorry. <laughs> well, Sean, tell us a bit about uh, your connections to all this wonderful mess. Well, uh, in uh, about five years ago, I attended the Dallas Film Festival for the first time. Hi. Um, and uh, my wife, now wife, she was my girlfriend at the time, uh, we got five, five tickets to five movies. First time I'd gone to a film festival, and I loved it. Next year we did ten movies. The next year, I was working for uh, the company I was working for. One of my clients gave me a film pass as a gift, and so I did that. And I was like, "This is awesome." Year after that, the company they, we were a company uh, a community sponsor, and so I presented at DIF. Um, um, uh, what is it? Trust me. Mm -hmm. um, and so they got to see it from that perspective. And uh, we were still working on the movie, and I was hoping to get it in. I was always hoping that because I was from Dallas and I enjoyed the festival, that would happen. But uh, last year I volunteered to like, uh, and I was an usher and did, you know, met some uh, amazing people, the staff from the festival, they're all amazing people. And, and then this year, filmmaker. So I got the badges, I got a whole collection. You got them, I, I wanted to get that film badge, and from what I understand, the only way you get it is if you make a film, so that's the only way I could get it, so I had to make a movie. It's cool. So it's come full circle, 10th cool. anniversary is also a fitting way for you to your film love here in Dallas. Yeah, it's an honor to be a, a part of it. And James uh, has been very enthusiastic about the movie, which is really exciting for us because we were, you know, it's like this little punk rock thing and our intention wasn't necessarily to have it be a big thing like this. And so... It was my intention, just not Sean's. Well, once he got on board, <laughs> he knew. But I mean, at mine, I was just trying to learn how to do all stuff and I, I learned a lot. Like, I mean, I definitely learned a lot. <laughs> well, I've got a long history with James as well. Yeah. Uh, we were, I was just talking about how James and I worked together at Mary Kay, mm -hmm. um, which he probably doesn't want me to say. <laughs> but uh, Mary Kay Cosmetics paid very well back in the day, and that's where I met James Faust. And then uh, he, uh, he helped me get my first film into AFI uh, the last year that um, it was AFI before it turned into DIFF. Mm -hmm. So um, it was really nice to be able to come back and do something with James again since we've started you know, working in uh, cosmetic care together so many years ago. Well, I think Love that's the best way. A Faust moment Faust. here with the Fat Rec documentary. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming out and okay. thanks for bringing the puppets thanks. and everything. Yeah.